Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at Discover Brigham. My name is Diane Sethos. I am the nurse director of the Burn Trauma Surgical ICU and Step Down Floor at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And this is our team, Dr. Tulabaya and Steve Penny. And we have been working on artificial intelligence and his name, the demo is named um, Hey Briggy. Hey Briggy. Yes. My apologies. Hey Briggy. <laughs> and uh, we would like to demonstrate this for you. Okay. Steve. Hey everyone. My name is Steve Penny. I'm a manager for mobile technology and end user experience for Brigham Health. And I've got the pleasure of working with uh, voice user assistance and uh, voice user interfaces for about three years now. Okay. And uh, I'm Samir Chulbayev. I'm a geriatrician at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And uh, 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 Diane, Steve, and myself, uh, we have been working on this project for about a year and a half, right? And uh, so if we came a long way and, uh, and still we think it's the you know, beginning of our journey. So what we want to do is present to you the Brigham, which is a, a nursing assistant based on uh, uh, voice technology. And we'll show you how it works. Okay, so let me... Uh, set the Briggy right here, and uh, this is, as I said before, uh, in the first round of our demo, uh, this virtual demo is very new for all of us. So uh, let me let me share my screen uh, first. Uh, okay, so um, okay, so um, so this is Briggy. Okay, so Briggy is uh, what we call embodied conversational user interface, right? So uh, unlike Alexa or Siri or Cortana, it has a body which is very important for patients to feel comfortable. We all like cuddly teddy bears since, uh, since our childhood. So if you look at the Briggy hardware, uh, what uh, you will notice that the Briggy has activating buttons in both ears, actually. There's a custom speaker, microphone, and then LED light that shows um, that Briggy is active. Inside the brain of the Briggy is actually a Raspberry Pi uh, microcomputer, and then there's um, portable battery. And the chassis actually, as I already said, it's a single use plush teddy bear toy. The single use because you really don't have to clean it after um, when a patient gets discharged, patient is supposed to get the bear as a gift. And uh, so this is uh, schematics of Briggy patient interaction. Okay, the most important thing to notice that Briggy does not listen to conversations while inactive. Uh, we think that this is extremely important for patients' privacy. So it doesn't work like Alexa or Siri. It doesn't listen all the time. It will either get activated um, uh, uh, every hour by itself to ask questions or you actually have to activate it with pressing one of its ears. Uh, so it wakes at every hour and initiates the dialogue. And as I mentioned, those LED light will indicate the Briggy is in active mode. So the hourly safety rounds is something that first appeared around 2007, was developed by a Studer Group, which is hospital consulting company and, and they showed that hourly nursing rounds actually can decrease uh, the rate of falls, um, decrease pressure ulcers, and also increase uh, nursing satisfaction with their work and, and uh, uh, patient experience. So uh, nurses get, as you know, nurses get a lot of uh, call, uh, calls, um, and uh, it was actually shown that about 60% of those calls uh, on a call button related to either pain or uh, toilet. So those are four P's of hourly safety rounds, pain assessment, potty, toileting, positioning, and personal comfort. And now we're going to demonstrate to you how Briggy is supposed to work. So I will be the patient. So I'm gonna get into the bed uh, with, and I have my bear. Okay. And uh, I am actually in pain right now because I fell and cracked my ribs. So let's start the demo. Uh, Hello, Mr. Thompson. My name is Freaky. 
and I have an artificial intelligence nursing assistant. I will be asking you about your pain and comfort every hour, and will send a text message to your nurse if you need any help. You can also wake me up at any time by pressing one of my ears. Here we go. Do you have any pain right now? Uh, yes. Are you able to tolerate the pain you are experiencing? Uh, no, I'm hurting. I am sorry that you are experiencing pain. I have sent a text message to your nurse saying that your pain is intolerable. She will be with you right away. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Johnson. Oh, hi, Diane. Hi, I just received a, a text message from Brittany noting that you're in pain. Oh, yes. That's really bad. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Okay. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain? Oh, it's 10, Diane. It's a 10 out of 10? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're written for, for um, 1 to 2 oxycodone. Uh, um, how many would you like? Do you, do you want to start off with 1 or 2? Uh, yeah, we can try 1. Maybe. You sure? Yeah, I just don't want to take a lot of opioids. Okay. okay, all right. Let me go get you one and I'll be right back. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. So um, I'm getting filled from uh, Diane, so I took the pill, and um, you know, hour later, when he wakes up again. Hello, Mr. Johnson. It's time for your hourly safety rounds. Here we go. Do you have any pain right now? Uh, yes. Are you able to tolerate the pain you are experiencing? Yeah, it's better. Does the pain make it difficult for you to take a deep breath or move around? Oh, oh, yes, it hurts when I take a deep breath. I'm sorry that you are experiencing pain. I have sent a text message to your nurse saying that your pain is intolerable. She will be with you right away. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Johnson. I'm back. Brittany, Brittany just informed me that uh, the pain is still still bothering. Is that correct? Yeah, it's it's better after the first oxycodone. But okay. you know, when I it asked me whether you know it hurts when I take a deep breath, and it, it does actually it still hurts. It's hard for me to cough. I feel that you know yeah. phlegm is stuck right here. Yeah. Oh, and we know how important it is for you to cough and deep breathe to help prevent pneumonia. Yeah. Um. So I think um. Let's see where your pain is now. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate it? Uh, it's better. It's probably around six. Probably around six. So we made yeah. some made some progress. Uh -huh. So let me go get you the other oxycodone that uh -huh. you're um, able to have. And I think one of the things we need to keep in mind as we move forward is we don't want your pain to get too far ahead where the medicine isn't able to help you. Okay, okay so let me go get the medicine. I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you're you so welcome. much. So Diane went and gave me another oxycodone. So my pain is getting better. So another hour passes. Hello, Mr. Johnson. It's time for your hourly safety rounds. Here we go. Do you have any pain right now? Uh, yeah, it's mild now. Are you able to tolerate the pain you are experiencing? Yes. Does the pain make it difficult for you to take a deep breath or move around? Uh, no, it's much, much better. Thank you. That's great to hear. We want to avoid any side effects from opioid pain medications, such as confusion, nausea, and severe constipation, and therefore prefer not to administer opioids if you can tolerate the pain. I will ask you about your pain again in one hour. Thank However, you. if your pain gets worse before that, just press one of my ear. Okay. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Uh, no. Do you need any help with turning or adjusting your position? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, please. I'm kind of tired. Okay. I have sent a text message to your nurse stating that you need assistance with repositioning. Someone will be with you right away. Please do not get up on your own, as you might fall. If you need anything else, just press my ear. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Johnson. How are we doing? Oh, much better, Diane. Much, much better. better. Oh, that's yeah, great. I can pop and take a deep breath. It's... Oh, wonderful. Thank wonderful. 
Um, and so do you need to be repositioned? Yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable. I feel so tired to turn myself. Okay. Um, so what I did is I'm just waiting for Pauline to come in. Pauline will help me. I was able to um, to signal her prior to coming in where Brittany texted me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You. So this is uh, basically our only safety rounds. Um, you know, uh, one of the keys that, you know, we, we didn't demonstrate is uh, personal comfort, which, you know, I can press the ear and ask Brittany to, you know, I want something to drink. Um, uh, or, or um, you know, I'm hungry, et cetera, or just call the nurse for any other reason. So, and now uh, let's let's say that uh, in between this hourly safety rounds, I need something else. Let's say that I'm in pain again. So what I'm gonna do is, again, Briggy is not actively listening, so I have to activate the Briggy. So I'm gonna press Briggy's ear. Hello, Mr. Johnson. How can I help you? Oh, uh, my back hurts. Okay, I understand that you're experiencing pain. I have sent a text message to your nurse, and someone will be with you right away. Please do not try to get up on your own, as you may fall. If you ever do get a, a will or get And so, uh, so Brigitte sends a text message to Diane, and then Diane has to come, and the person will reassess the pain. And, or let's say that uh, I want to go to the bathroom. Again, I'm going to press Bridget's ear. Hello, Mr. Johnson. How can I help you? Uh, I need to go to the bathroom fast. Okay. I have sent a text message to your nurse stating that you need toileting assistance. Someone will be with you shortly. Please do not get up on your own as you might fall. If you need anything else, just press my ear. Thank you. Okay, so so this is a, a demo of a safety rounds. As you could see, the Brigitte actually reacts to different utterances. This is very important because there are a lot of different ways patients can express their pain or ask for toileting assistance from, you know, I got a pee to, you know, bring me a commode, et cetera, et cetera. And everything, you know, has to, all the utterances has to be programmed. And um, we'll have a more in-depth discussion uh, with Diane and Steve here uh, at 1.30, where you know, we would like you to join us for a session where we will discuss conversational user interfaces um, in medicine and then generally how we can use it to assist our nurses with uh, patient care. Thank you so much. Thanks for attending. Thank you, everyone.